around the studio. We got umbrellas open over our heads. We're breaking mirrors, walking under ladders, even calling Jason back up from the dead. Well, it's the Friday the 13th, morning spectacular. Listen at your own risk. Yeah. Scott and Todd, Shannon in the morning. Friday the 13th, the lucky listener worth one thousand dollars. Scott and Todd, Nairobi, Joseph B. Nolan, and Narna Charlie with Joey B. Live from Farmingdale, Long Island. Are you dudes ready? Hello, Scott Santa. We are fired up at the Burger King. We got all the wackos, weirdos, reverts, reverts, limbos, bimbos, and brain dead ghetto heads out here. And we are ready to kick off this weekend. Friday, 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 Friday. In the morning on 95.5 PLJ. Direct from the brand new Bazooka Ballroom at the world famous Bamboo Bernie's Bar, corner of 82nd and Broadway, New York City. It's the spooky, kooky, don't make me laugh, black cat, vampire, bat, freaky, geeky, Friday the 13th weekend blast. All spectacular. Right. With the always dapper radio rapper. The joy boy with the joy toy. The daddy with the radio. The big boss with the big hot sauce. Ram and Jam and Michael Scott Shannon along with scam boy Todd, the Albany, New York love god. Getting ready to pronounce the gate on his own quick. <laughs> and the rest of the PLJ morning crew, shame on you. Handy dandy dashboard singers. Now when everybody's ready, reach over, crank up your radio, stick your head out the window, and repeat after me. One, two, three. Gentlemen, Scott Shannon and Todd Pettengill on WPLJ. Ta da! Bow, bow, bow. Not a five five, PLJ. Shannon in the morning, Naomi looking for a new man. Todd Pettengill, the DJ of choice. Here's the problem he's only been in New York City, the big show, for a limited amount of time. And. Even Scott Chatter needs to take a couple of days off once in a while. You know what I mean, Joe? Yeah, Scott. I mean, I'm no Mickey Dolans, but occasionally I'm out of here. All right? And you're a brave soul for letting us do whatever we want on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> next Monday, next Tuesday, and next Wednesday, Pettengill stands alone in New York City. I was a little concerned until I called his mentor, the distinguished broadcaster Lloyd Smith. Lloyd is the president, general manager... Traffic director, chief engineer, and DJ <laughs> at WCSS in Amsterdam, New York. And that's where Todd was raised. Lloyd Smith trained him. I asked Lloyd about Todd's abilities. I trained him. I put him on the air. We, we threw the switch. You know, this is the mic switch. This here is the mic. Now you talk in this end. What else do you like about him? Yeah, well, his, his stuff is okay. You filled out his logs okay. <laughs> that's all we care about here at ABC <laughs> Capital Cities. 822, let's warm him up right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Todd. PLJ Scott and Todd, the morning radio program people around the world are talking about. This is the culmination of the work week. Ladies and gentlemen, please join with us in the American tradition known as the weekend. All we need is a couple days off. 955 WPLJ. 
8.34 in the morning as we check cars with Mr. Joe Nolan. In Mount Lincoln and Holland Tunnels, a 30 to 35 minute delay. 15 inbound at George now. Eastbound Route 4, Main Street, Hackensack. An accident there with injuries. Inbound LIE, bumper to bumper from the fairgrounds to the tanks. The Grand Central Parkway was a lot better than the LIE this morning coming inbound. 122nd Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenues. Again, that four alarm fire. The fire is out, but still there's a lot of fire activity around there. And the Garden State Parkway northbound easing into 135, but still extra heavy. Again, that because of uh, just a lot of volume getting in there. And Auburn inside is in effect in all five boroughs of New York City. Now, just because a traffic stall doesn't mean that your business has to be. For more information about cellular service from 9X, call them at 1-800-292-BELL. It's 835. Next PLJ traffic update in 14 minutes. It's a Genesis weekend all weekend long right here on 955 PLJ. We have to do this ever report. The New Jersey Devils Death Watch for the playoffs. Oh, San Jose's next. <laughs> continues. <laughs> Joe Nolan checks cars at 9 before 9. Southbound New England through a left lane open between 16 and 15. It's a traffic update in 14 minutes. Minutes. Now, Joe, will the devil's casket be open or closed? Oh, man. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. I can't believe it. It's time again. The old clock in the wall says it's time for another edition of our Ask Joe Nolan. Let's go to the studio line, Joe, and see what we can uh, fish up here. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. My name is Arnold Potts. I'm calling from Teenag, New, New Jersey. Jersey. I'm a Shannon in the morning, Scott and Todd at 924, Gnarly and Joey on the way back from Farmingdale, Long Island. It's a major rage going on. Naomi's big bachelorette party details will be announced next week. <laughs> if you'd like to be in attendance for that thing, none of this dating game junk either. None of that stuff that cheapens a broadcast. No. no. Why the, not? The <laughs> obvious stuff, get out of it. You know what? You're in a much better mood now. Me? First of all, she missed work on Monday. Right. She, she OD'd on, she damn near OD'd on Sunday. We cleared uh -huh. all the razor blades out of the place. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we made some, uh, some progress in the rehabilitation department here. You guys have been great. Occasional smile. Yeah. She's wearing makeup again. <laughs> Walking tall. Oh, that's good. Dressing up for a change. It's 925, nasty Nancy sometime this morning. Happy birthday to Matt Meadow. 95.5 PLJ, 9.35. The Lucky by Jimmy Deal doing a little <laughs> control room entertaining this morning. Oh, jocularity <laughs> rolling through the studio. Naomi never heard that story. No. When I first came to the radio station, Jimmy Deal had already been working here. For 14 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd already heard about, <laughs> already heard about him that he was a big Elvis fan, yep. and I myself happen to be a big Elvis fan. So whenever I go to a radio station, the first thing I do is unfurl this big Elvis. Is it a tapestry? Uh -huh. Sure. Big tapestry, and I put Elvis on the wall, and uh -huh. it, it hangs behind me. That's a good. That's the king right there. And Naomi hangs her earrings on the bottom of the tapestry <laughs> so she doesn't lose them, everyone. So anyway, I wanted to kind of. Let's do a little put on with Jimmy. Tell Jimmy what happened the first time I saw you. I'm all excited, first of all. First time I ever meet Scott Shannon, he's in the hall, yeah, and I run out. I was. I was all excited. Uh -huh. and I said, hi, Scott, I'm Jimmy Deal. I said, I've been working here for a while. And he just looks at me and goes, man, don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to say. I said, don't you make eye contact with me. <laughs> don't ever look at me. <laughs> so I get here about three months later, and I see this guy walking into the studio backwards. And Jimmy, what the heck are you doing? Well, well Scott told me not to make eye contact with him. What happened is... Oh, when I said that to him, somebody came by and said something and it got my attention. And I forgot to tell him that it was just a joke. Because uh. that's, that's what Prince does. Right. And that's what Diana Ross does. You're not allowed to make eye contact with them. If you work for them, you have to, you, you, you turn your head. Yes, Ms. Ross. You, Plus, you take all the green M&Ms out of the bag. You got you to gotta call her Ms. Ross. Yep. And you're not allowed to look Prince in the eye. 936 and Nolan. Yes. We're not, we're not joking about you. You can't make eye contact with anyone. <laughs> We're late with that phone scam. It's number 61, and it's all about Friday the 13th. We called a, one of these hokey ghost places, you know, with all, the, yeah, with all the experiences going on. It's very, 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 very easy to explain. Haunted house, big troubles, roll the scam. Good morning. Yes, I have an experience I'd like to report. All right. 
Just a moment, please. Uh, Mr. Anders, our director, is not in the office today, but I'll take uh, as much as I can, and uh, he may have to call you back. All right. Uh, I need to tell him because I'm leaving the country, and I need him to start this investigation. Okay. Scam 1 800 Dino Cop. Thank you for calling the Dino Cop hotline. Begin recording after the tone. When you have finished recording, press pound. <laughs> My name is Clockwitch. Diesel Clockwitch? And I got some startling news to report to you people. But before I begin, I just want to make it clear up front. I'm going to need protection in the dinosaur relocation program. <laughs> Let me get to my list. <laughs> I was at the Burpin Bowl Lanes in Weehawken, New Jersey. The head pin has a giant dinosaur coolie on it. You knock it down, you get a free game and tickets to the flick. Then I goes to the Good Diner in New York City. I order the Dino Dinner. Comes with slaw, curly fries, and a pork chop. I go to Kmart to buy underwear, right? Big fraud logo covering up my dino bone right on the front of the shelf. I feel like I'm under a big Tyrannosaurus Rex. Everywhere I go, everywhere I look, everything I see. Sick pot logo on it. And a fraud logo, so I'm keeping it on people. Anyway, I took my kid to see the movie over the weekend. She's been shaking. She's all pale. She won't get in my Jeep. I have a 4x4. Four four. She just sits in the corner, pale, peeking, crying, screaming. Dinosaurs! Dinosaurs! I just wanted to thank you for a lovely, quiet weekend. <laughs> oh, my God! sighting of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I don't know if the logo is genuine or not, but uh, it is definitely within distance from me right now. I could spit at the thing, it's so close. Help me! Thank you. That is my message. I will now hit the pound sign. To review your entire message, press 77. Oh, no. oh, no. To send your message, press pound. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Clockwitch. These are Clockwitch. I guess that'll be enough for him. <laughs> You don't care at all about my health, obviously. Sure. Dear Scott, Todd, Naomi, Bye. and Caffeine Boy, <laughs> please scam our friend Marlene. She's a fellow mom that hangs with us on the playground at the... I can't get the building name. Good idea. But sometimes she gets a little wild. I get oh. this twitch. There's a camera down at the playground. Could you please scam her and tell her you're from the building management? Oh, no. <laughs> and you saw her. Now, apparently, this woman uh, had some jello that she brought down for her kid, and she threw it in the fountain. They have a oh, fountain right. at this playground. Right. <laughs> and uh, also, she's been known to have a little uh, alcoholic beverage in the Barney thermos. No! <laughs> she, uh, she sneaks it in. She figured nobody... I mean, well, she didn't really sneak it. I mean, she didn't have to sneak it. She's a grown woman. But she carries it in the Barney. <laughs> sure. Oh, that's fun. Her friends just ratted her out. Little white Zinfandel. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Here yeah, you go, you ladies go. and gentlemen. Phone scam number 210. The Playground Police. Hello? 
Yes, hello? Yes. Yes, my name is uh, Dewey Lorenjorp. Phone scam number 211 called Henry Lee Ritzenthaler. It's a quick one this morning, so listen up. at the White House in Washington? Are you at home? Mr. President, would you like to leave a message? I just wanted to let Henry know that I know that I know that you just want me to acknowledge you and I'm calling to do that on your machine here. Now that I've acknowledged you, can you please, how should I say, get lost? <laughs> I've got popularity problems coming out in the yin-yang. Nobody likes me and Quite frankly, the last thing I need is some scraggly-looking, greasy-haired dude who looks like an extra from Deliverance following me around all over the place. So let's recap. I know we're related. Hi, how are you? Beat it, freak. Oh, you've just been phone scared. Oh, man. Dinosaur uh, Basher. He's written songs about, I hate you, you hate me. <laughs> He's a big basher, right? So I heard him on the show, Graham. I thought it'd be interesting to call him and uh, act as a parent. <laughs> really annoyed. I got his newsletter, and I'm just shocked. <laughs> yeah, the guy puts out a Barney the Dinosaur newsletter right. with all bad news. And he's got a song about Barney beating him up, you know, and I said, as, <laughs> as a parent, this is disgusting to me. He sends the newsletter out to people all over the world. Yep. He is founder and president of the I Hate Barney Secret Society. <laughs> he's the head Barney basher of America. That's right. So Todd goes in and said, Rocky, give me that phone number, yeah, that man. that number there, Rock Man. He's perfect for a morning phone scam. Barney Buster. <laughs> Hello? Hi, Mr. Curran, please. This is R Mr. Curran, Rob. Hi, Rob, how are you? Doing pretty good. Who's this? Uh, my name is Dave. Hello, Dave. Dave Whitzer. Uh-huh. And uh, I saw your newsletter. Sure. Well, I was just calling to uh, to tell you that I was upset about this. Why? Because uh, I think Barney is very important to kids. Well, I think he's very important to kids, too, but uh, uh, he kind of lends himself to satire a bit. But this is all over the place now. It's, it's like there's an outcry, uh -huh. and I just don't understand it because I have six kids. I see. I had a very upsetting weekend with them. You know, it's... Uh, the motto of the secret society uh, is you don't have to tell the kids you belong, and so uh, we're trying to keep it from the kids. Why did you suddenly flip over the edge? <laughs> oh, it's not that I flipped over the edge. It's just uh, So terrorizing children for a quick buck is okay with you? I'm not making a quick buck off of this. I haven't made a nickel off it. As a matter of fact, I've lost money on it. Come on. Well, what's this song you're supposed to have? The song I'm supposed to have? There's a song or something that goes along with it. Uh, well, it's just a little uh, satire of the Barney song. How does it go? I hate you. No, sing it. I can't sing. I Come on, sing it. <laughs> nah, I hate you. You hate me. Hey, just sing the song. Uh, my voice stinks. Can you sing the song, please? No. Do you have some sort of legal outfit that represents you? No. Well, you better get one. I don't think that's necessary. Why is that? Satirical material is... Just sing the song! Can uh, we take a different tack here? Sing it. No. Sing it. No. Sing it. No. Sing the song. No. Sing the song. No. Sing it. Would you like to hear some headlines from... Uh... What are you talking about? The Oprah and Barney binge. Harsh words after tryst, Twinkies, tamales, and triscuits. You're nuts. What about the children's lives? Well, uh, I don't stop certainly my own daughter from watching Barney. I bet she can't stand you. Do you sing that song to her? Nope. I hate you. You hate me. You're fostering great relationships there. No, I don't, uh, I don't sing it to my daughter. Sing the song! Uh, this is a complaint phone call. Okay. Because I'm sick of you people. Well, your complaint's duly noted, and... Uh, yeah, what are you going to do about it? Nothing, uh, right? You're just going to keep slandering the name of the dinosaur. Hey, he's a, he's a big target. And you're ripping apart kids' heroes. Merry 
Christmas! Merry Christmas to you. Hey, sing this song. I hate you. You hate me. Two fractured branches on the family tree with a vicious barb and a thwack from me to you. Won't you say you hate me too? Gee. I hate you. You hate me. Mortal enemies as kids can be with a your mom's trash and a jab from me to you. Won't you say you hate me too?